welcome back to the avocado toast budget if you're new here my name is Lexa and today is part two of us walking through step by step how to set up your budget inside of the YNAB app YNAB made some changes I talked about those a little bit in part one it doesn't affect a whole lot but it does change up some of the verbiage and it makes it a lot easier for you to start your budget so I wanted to show you exactly how to set it up get rolling and in the first part we went over setting up the actual budget layout inside of the app and now we are going to talk about paying off debt tracking your expenses putting in your paycheck and putting in your credit card inside of the YNAB app so uh, let's go ahead and get into it Okay, so I have our budget from part one set up right here. If you wanna know more about that, how we got to this point, definitely check out part one, then come back for this part, part two. But now we are going to go ahead and set up a credit card inside of YNAB. I talked more in depth about using YNAB to pay off your credit cards and all of that in this right here. Even though I filmed it and uploaded it before the update, everything still applies so definitely check out this video if you have more questions about the ins and outs of how YNAB deals with credit cards but in order to add your credit card account we are going to click add accounts this one is going to be an unlinked then we select credit card I'm gonna name it chase card and then you're going to put your current balance in the here right now you can always go back and change this if you don't know exactly what it is but I'm just gonna like make up a number so let's say you have $1,475.35 on your card right now. Click Done, Next. Then YNAB gives you two main options. You can either create a target to pay off the balance over time, or you can cover your entire balance, or you can skip it. If you have enough to pay off your credit card in full, click this Cover My Entire Balance. But most people probably fall in this first category, so that's what we're going to choose. This means you don't have enough in cash in your checking right now to pay off your credit card and fund everything else that you need to cover. Click next, then they give you another two options. You can either pay off the balance by a specific date or put a certain amount every month toward that balance. I am going to go with pay off a specific amount every month. And I am going to say we have another $150 to put toward our credit card. You'll wanna evaluate your expenses and income and decide for you how much is realistic for you. YNAB will tell you right here that it will take 10 months for you to pay off your balance over time if you go with this option. Click next. It's telling you it's going to set up its own category so you don't have to go in and make a specific category and category group for your credit card, YNAB does that for you. So here we are, and if we scroll up here, we can see right under debt payments is our Chase card right here. And if we click on it, we can see it is already assigned a target. So we have a target of $150 every month toward that card. Personally, inside of my YNAB budget, whenever I am dealing with paying off credit cards, I like to create a separate category for interest. So this $150 is just what you will be putting on top of any extra spending that you're putting on your credit card moving forward and on top of your interest payment. Because in YNAB, they calculate interest as basically just another expense because really, that's what it is. If that confuses you, you have more questions, go check out that credit card video. But I'm going to go ahead and add a category group for interest. Then I made a Chase card interest category. Then we can set a target if we would like. If you know around what your normal interest rate is, you can go ahead and put that amount in here. To calculate the average that you spend on interest, just go back through the last few months of your credit card statements and see how much they've been charging you. But let's go ahead and say ours is around $50 a month that we wanna to put toward that interest that we're accruing on our credit card. We're gonna make this a monthly goal by the end of the month. Click yes and click done. And then right there you can see credit card interest has shown up there at the top. Now that we have our credit card put in there, you can repeat this for any other credit cards that you have. But now I wanna go through and show you how to track expenses inside of the YNAB app. So let's say your week is going on, you haven't quite gotten paid yet, but you're spending money. Let me show you how that works. Anytime that you spend money or you have a transaction going in or out of your account, you're going to click this plus button. Let's say for this one, your internet bill just came out and that is $35. So we'll put that in there. It will be red since this is something that you're spending money on. Then you have to click the, so first thing is you have to click the payee. I already did this once and then I had to delete it, so it's already remembered that AT&T is the payee. If I wanted to create a new one, I would just start typing 
and it will pull up an option to create a payee. That's just basically who is this expense going toward. We're gonna keep that as AT&T. The category is our internet bill. And we can see here next to this check mark, we already have $35 set aside for this bill. So we are good to go. We are not gonna go in the red because of this. And then let's say this came directly out of our checking account. So we're good here under accounts. We could also put if it came out of our savings or out of our credit card. Everything else is good to go. You can always add a memo. You can click whether it's already cleared your account or not and you can flag it if you wanna organize it. I'm gonna click Save Transaction. You can see here it came out of our checking account and it also shows up here under our internet. So we can see that we've assigned $35, but now it says we don't have any money available and that's because we already spent this $35. So YNAB is letting us know, since we only put 35 in, we spent that 35, there's nothing left that we have toward our internet bill. Now let me show you an example of overspending. So let's say we just went to the grocery store and we spent $110 on groceries. We put the payee, I'm gonna select Meyer. The category now needs to get changed to groceries. We can see here, we only had $80 set aside for groceries. You don't wanna track that you only spent $80 since that's all you have in this category, since that's not realistic, you actually spent this 110. So we're gonna go ahead, put that we put 110. I'm gonna keep this simple and show you what it looks like inside of your checking account. Click Save Transaction and then we'll see. It did show up here inside of our checking account as $110, that's correct. But inside of our budget, rather than saying zero right here under groceries, it now says negative 30. And it's in red letting us know, hey, you overspent here, you need to find a way to cover this overspending to make sure that your budget is accurate. So at this point, I need to go through in my budget and say, okay, where can I take some money from? I can't take it from electric or car insurance because those things are going to be due. I don't really wanna take it from my sinking funds or my savings goals, but I could if I need to. Instead, I do know that I have $10 set aside in my whoops category. This is to help me cover some of that overspending. So I'm going to click on the groceries, click move money. I know I have $10 available in my whoops category. So I'm going to set that here and tell YNAB to move that $10 from whoops to groceries. That helps me a little bit. Now I've only overspent by 20. Now let's say, okay, I overspent by 20, so the next place I wanna take that from is eating out. So I'm gonna move $20 from eating out to groceries. That's what this looks like on here. Click check, and now we can see I have $5 assigned toward my eating out, and my groceries are good to go. So that's what this is all about, deciding, okay, I did overspend, where do I want this money to come from? Now I just know I have less money to spend in eating out, I'm gonna have to cook those groceries that I bought this week and wait until I get paid again to actually go and eat out and spend that money because I just don't have it right now unless I wanted to move some money around. Speaking of getting paid, let me show you what that looks like inside of YNAB. Again, we are going to add a transaction since this is technically something that is either coming in or out of our account, except we're going to switch the little negative red button to a green plus button. This is showing us that we have money coming in. Then add in the amount of our paycheck. Let's say my paycheck was $850.42. You'll wanna put the in name of your employer and then the category for any inflow of money I always just put it in ready to assign. This is the part where we're gonna be able to go through and decide what we want this money to do for us. If we were to put it in specific categories, it just gets kind of messy. It's hard to deal with. It's a lot easier to just throw it all in ready to assign and then go through and decide where you want that money to go. It's going into our checking account, click save transaction, and then it's going to show up right up here at ready to assign. When we click it, it's going to auto assign that money and tell us where we think this money needs to go depending on the due dates that we've put inside of YNAB. But of course, you know yourself better than any app, so you're gonna have to move around this money to decide where you want it to go. I went through this a little bit more in depth in part one when we were first setting up our budget, so definitely go check that out if you're a little bit confused. But for your paycheck, you're basically just repeating the same process that we did in part one deciding what does this money need to do for me before I get paid again. So I like that it has funded my car payment because I know that's due before I get paid again. Same thing with my Chase card interest. 
But if you want to move money around and put it in different places, the first thing I like to do is just take out the amount from the category that you don't want as much money in. Then decide where you want to move this money to. So let's say I want to move $50 more toward rent. So I'm going to click the plus sign, add 50. That leaves us with 25 and I want to add 25 into our wedding fund. And we're good to go. Our remaining to assign is at zero, meaning we have given every single dollar a job. Click apply and then here we go. It has updated our budget based on us getting paid. Now we're just going to repeat the steps of putting in our transactions in our paycheck and moving money around when it's needed. I hope that this helped you walk through and set up your why not budget. If you have any questions, definitely leave me a comment down below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm, helps boost this video to the top. That way more people can find this content. And I will see you all next time. Bye.